it's weird how some things work out, isn't it? I jumped on here Wednesday night just to grind some scrap for some BPs. It was wipe day the next day and the update, and I knew I had a sort of vague plan in my head of what I wanted to do through the next wipe, and there were some blueprints that I needed in order to make life a lot easier. I didn't even have any designs on making a video when I logged in. I record everything that I do in Rust just through habit at this point, just in case anything remotely interesting happens. But man, I'm glad I was recording tonight because something did happen that A, really annoyed me and B, took me way away from my original goal. Things were going pretty well. I built a little 2x2 two two right next to Outpost because the server had almost nobody on it and I was just farming the same barrels over and over and over again. Things could not have been going any easier. Just as I was getting ready to log off I found a horse as well so I bolted up the coast real quick, ran through satellite dish and figured that would be a solid end to the session. Happy with the progress that I'd made in the few hours that I'd been online, I took the horse back to the base, depoted all my gear and logged off, ready to crack on again and continue tomorrow. I returned in the morning, unsurprisingly, to an unraided base. First inspection showed that while everything was the same, I did have a new neighbour next door. I couldn't tell if they were online or not but they didn't seem to be causing any problems, so I just went about my business, like yesterday, just grinding it out through the same spots trying to find the scrap I needed. And as I worked my way through the morning, I barely even gave that neighbour a second thought. That was until night time fell, and he decided that he wanted to come round and steal my horse. Now I'm very much of the opinion that sharing is caring, but stealing is something that I just can't abide, so I chucked some night vision goggles on and just went to have a look around, see what he was doing, see what he was about. And maybe I shouldn't have taken a bow, and maybe I shouldn't have headshotted him with it, but it's no excuse for what comes next. You little wow, he went straight to that level, my god. Now obviously I'm not going to replay word for word exactly what he said, but he said some things that were really fucking racist. And I can't abide that, it's not on. So I took my horse back and parked it up just outside Outpost and went back, looking for round two, even though my PvP skills are essentially still in the toilet. Now just as we were getting to the halfway point of this little second round of ours, the heli turned up and as much as I enjoyed watching it circle his base and light him up every time he came out, I didn't want to get destroyed either. So I figured the best thing to do was to go back, wait inside for the helicopter to leave and then try and finish things up once it had gone. Now the eventual end to this second round didn't go the way that I wanted it to and it for sure would not be the first time that we crossed paths and it would not be the first time that we annoyed each other a little bit too much. But what it did do is give me a good insight into Mr Bright's and show me what kind of person he really is. The type that will jump in the chat and be a smug shit after killing you for example. I was having to be a lot more careful as I was entering and leaving the base. Mr. Bright's need to wind me up seemed to exceed my need to wind him up for the time being, and him running laps around my base certainly wasn't helping. But even with that being as it is, I was still managing to get down the tech tree, ultimately getting closer to the items that I really wanted. He, on the other hand, had clearly very much annoyed someone else as well as me because as he was running laps around my base, someone was trying to pick him off from the other side of the water. 
partly being inquisitive and partly smelling an opportunity, I went outside to have a look but ended up getting clapped because I cannot handle a gun in rust to save my life. Literally. But constantly being on a bag timer and constantly having him fighting outside was not doing me any favours either. Thankfully, a couple of hours went by where we just left each other alone. But as I was leaving my base one time, I did notice that he built half walls on the back to allow him to build more storage inside his base. And this gave me an idea. All I needed was two minutes of him being out of his base and me with enough satchels that I could blow in, destroy his TC and take his base for my own. He'd been making a point of saying to everyone within earshot that he was only there to farm for BPs. So that led me to believe that his base is either full of scrap and components or it's full of stuff that he wants to research. Either way, me taking that base would put a big spanner in his operation. And it was at this moment that I decided that my own farming for BPs was going to have to come second. Raiding this guy and ruining his day was going to have to come first. He'd been racist, he'd been homophobic and there was no way I was going to turn a blind eye and let him get away with it. Being solo and having no cards kind of limited my options on how I was going to get the explosives together to actually raid him. Short of somehow getting a red card and doing an oil rig or an underwater labs or an arctic research base or something similar, I figured my best bet was just to keep running the monuments I knew I could run and eventually in a crate or in a box somewhere there would be the explosive whether it be a bean can grenade or a satchel or something that would help me get started. And I found that thing at the dome. I'd had a lot of success there in my last wipe. I figured it was as good a place as any to start. And literally three crates in, I found exactly what I was looking for. There it is. That's what we needed. I ran the rest of the monument anyway. You never know what's going to be in those crates that's on the top. But as soon as I was done with that, I went straight back to Outpost, recycled what I needed to, and headed back to base with the rest. The first part of the getting rid of Bright's plan had been a success. Now it was time to move on to phase two. When I got back to the base, I was sorting my furnaces out when something happened that made me think I need to get this plan moving a hell of a lot quicker than I had been up to now. Hey, can you turn this on again? It's very cold. What the fuck is he on about? Can you, you turn it on again, please? What? Now, as far as I'm aware, and I might be wrong, Someone having a furnace on inside their base doesn't affect the comfort or warmth of someone outside it. Also, there was someone on my roof that had somehow got up there without any ladders. This in itself was, was very suspect to me. Especially considering that he jumped down there and then before I can find him, he's back on top again. And there's no ladder there. So what is going on? He hasn't got a mate that's boosting him. The only thing I can think of is that he's cheating. Don't kill me. Curious as to what these lads are actually all about, I decided to follow them because I had a feeling that they might have something to do with Mr. Bright's over here. Also, not wanting to get into another beef with someone else, I made sure that they knew that I was friendly. But all I needed was a few seconds around these two to get all the confirmation that I needed. Also, while getting that confirmation, Brights came back to his base and they looked all chummy and scarpered off together. So I followed them to see if they were actually all working together or whether this was just a happy coincidence. Because if he was cheating on top of everything else, there would have been a hole in my keyboard where the F7 button used to be. Who's that? Ruth, What's his name? Oh, what's his name? Come on. Oh. It's our dog. Oh, 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 he's here. He's here. Oh. The fucking prick's here. Look. Your bullet is Tony, man. You're kind of bad at this game. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Stood me up. Right, so he's hanging out with them lot. 
That's no good, man. That's no good. After this interaction, this dude seemed to be everywhere again. He was outside my base at night when I was trying to run out to gather more scrap. He was at the recyclers when I went to Outpost to recycle. He was camping me from his base as I was running back from Outpost. I just couldn't escape him. Having completely had enough and having been killed in my own doorway so that he was able to break my bag and loot my furnaces, I walked away from my computer having come as close to rage quitting as I ever had to go and regroup. When I came and sat down again, I had a renewed sense of determination. But more importantly, I had a new plan. While I was offline, I reached out to a few people to work out how best to proceed. One of whom was Rusty, who I played my last wipe with. He was unable to help me directly, as being in Australia he was the other end of the day, but he did bag me in his base and told me that as it was wipe day, I could take whatever I needed to get the job done. So after organising my own base, I F1 killed and spawned back in his base to see exactly what toys he had that I could make use of. Now from what I could gather, Rusty had only played for a day or so, but he still managed to build quite a collection of guns and ammo. There was even some C4 and some MLRS rockets as well. So I grabbed a couple of kits and as much guns and ammo as I could carry and started making the trek back to my own base. These runs back were by far the most nervous I've ever been playing Rust as well. Being fully aware that one bullet from one person can result in you losing absolutely everything is the most reliable way to get your heart rate right up. It took two runs to get everything back. The second one with the C4 being even more nerve wracking than the first one. But I made it back to base with no issues, got everything organised and then went outside to check that he was still online. I couldn't be sure but he'd been in the chat and running around recently so I was going to assume that he was still online and proceed as planned. Knowing full well that I more than likely had only one chance to make this work, I headed over to try and make my play. Right, here we go. Here we go. Let's hope he's inside. Oh shit, that went quicker than I thought it would. <gasps> yeah, there he is, there he is. Right, work at, uh, oh, oh, TC, I need to get rid of the TC. I need to get rid of the TC. Um, shit. Shit, I didn't bring enough ammo. Fucking satchel, satchel, that'll do. Well, that might have been the quickest satchel of all time. <laughs> Let's hope I can get back there before anyone realises where it was. Does one satchel wreck a TC? I think it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we need to get a door on. There we go. Right, it's mine. It's mine. What's he got? Has he got anything spectacular? Well, let's get rid of his bag first, just in case he comes back. Right, let's have a good look now. That's my body, so let's get the kit back on. What have we got? Right, that's the stuff out of my furnace, probably. He's got quite a lot. He's got a lot of kits. That'll do. Those will do. Those will do. That's, yeah. Yeah, this was worth. For one C4 and a satchel that wasn't even mine. <laughs> okay. Let's take that MP5 and I'll try and run this back to base, I suppose, and depot it all. Come back for some more. Right. Oh! Who the fuck was that? Oh, fro I wasn't him. Frogger, that's okay. If it's someone else, I can handle it. I just didn't want it to be him. Yeah, are you, st are you still here? Did all I was going to say is that, like, you're welcome to have the base. I, I, and all the loot. I raided this guy because he was, like, super horrific, horrible, toxic, racist, mega prick. So, like... Feel free to have as much of it as you want, man. It was it was right horrible. Uh, do we have any uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got loads. Yeah, do you, yeah, do you need some? 
So with all said and done, was it really worth all my time, effort, the stress? I don't know. But it was fun. And I don't know if I really ruined his last few hours or last day on the server trying to research all his BPs, but I hope I did. I hope I got a little bit of revenge just for just for him being the way that he was. Hanging out with cheaters, being racist, there's just there's no place for it. And as I said, I've got a plan, a loose plan for the next wipe. So hopefully I'll be back here again sooner rather than later. Cheers.